this so windy. I didn't think it was going to be this windy. Look. <laughs> Even the microphone's going, Argh! I think we're going to have to find somewhere a little bit quieter to do this vlog. Very windy. <laughs> Lovely view though, lovely view. Lovely view. Look. Lovely. Very windy. Alright guys, so here I am, Kasai Rinkai Koen, Kasai Seaside Park in English. Um, this area is technically in Chiba. Um, basically the only thing that separates this area in Chiba is just like the one river, the Arakawa, that comes into Tokyo. So if you want to kind of know where this area is, if you look on a map in Tokyo, you'll see one big river that comes up. It's just to the right of that. Um, I've come here to think about my vlog my show my channel whatever you call it but unfortunately it's massively windy today so i've tried to find the quietest place and even though i can see the microphone going, ah, at the top of this um so yeah i've come down to my bike and uh get a bit of exercise as well and it's a public holiday so it's a lovely time to come down here though it is packed with people so just to give you an idea of what this place is so hundreds of years ago this area has always been used for fishing um, because it's an estuary that comes into the area and so it's always been used for for people to fish and you know uh, and you know that basically started a whole area of people living here because people all basically wanted to live around where, where they would fish and live so um, that was all great until there was a big typhoon which also brought a tsunami and tsunami wiped out this whole area and I think that was in the 1930s um, and th you know I think like 200 people were killed and then it happened again in the 50s and I think that that, that point they kind of just said okay enough is enough and so what the government did was decide to make a very large concrete wall around the entire area and what happened was was that the concrete wall then cut off the people from the ocean and they realized it's a bad thing um, because people were no longer enjoying the sea they never even saw it the wall was so big um, think of a Donald Trump's wall <laughs> that big <laughs> and so what they just realized oh ducks Whack. Um, what they realized was that the wall also co collected all of the crap from the sea as well so this whole area just ended up being a mess of just junk from the sea that was you know just floating around so they decided to do something about it in the 60s and 70s they started work on this area this right here would have been the ocean um, or at least very deep into the ocean uh, into the estuary uh, so what we have here is reclaimed land this whole area was basically they had dredges they pulled up all the sand they dumped it here along with public waste and so what they would do is they built this whole land and you know Odaiba the whole area of Odaiba and then also over towards Disneyland which is just over there they basically made a whole brand new land and now they're building on it um, sometimes that causes a bit of problems around here um, if you are um, if you remember the big earthquake a couple of years back, um, some of the manhole covers all kind of moved upwards really quickly um, with cars crashing into them and things like that and it's weird subsidence uh, things because the whole land is just made by sand and so when the whole area starts to move, everything starts to move so all the, all the roads cracked and things like that. But anyway, so Kasai Rinkai a beautiful area. So they decided once when they rebuilt it, they would give it back to the people. 
and so now they have a beautiful area, a beautiful viewing spot and it's just really just a lovely area to come from. So if you know any of my photography you'll know this area. Well, a lot of my photography is in this area. I come down here, cycle down in the evening and take pictures here. It's a great, great area. It's just a shame today is a bit windy. Um, but yeah, anyway, let's go and talk about my vlog thing. Okay, let's put that around there. Let's try that. All right, finally found a place that's not so bonkers. And it's quiet, there's no people here yet. Yet, wait until like a troop of people run through here or something, something like that. There's lots of acorns. It's kind of, this area reminds me of um, Pembury Country Park if you're from Wales. You'll know what that feeling is if you know Pembury Country Park. So, um, yeah, just to quickly, because it's, it's now been a month and a half since I've made, started my vlog, which means I've now done about five shows. I think the last show I did was completely about photography, um, where I talked about Flickr and Smug Mug. I'm... I'll be honest, I don't know the direction, the right direction which I should go at the moment. So at the moment, you know, my initial thoughts on this whole vlog was going to be completely about photography. And then as soon as I started recording things, I realized that I wanted to do filmmaking and that I wanted to show more of Tokyo and I wanted to learn, I wanted to learn filmmaking myself as well. So, you know, all the camera settings, all of the um, editing stuff, that's all completely new to me. Being a normal photographer, a still photographer, going to video, it's a different thought process completely and so it's taken me a little bit of a while to kind of get a feel for it. Um, if you look back you know on my first video the first thing I did was pretty much shout at the camera um, and then I realized as time went on that that's not probably something I should do. People like to have their ear intact when they're <laughs> listening <laughs> on headphones. So you know things like this has constantly been learning about it and I think every vlog I've done has been a new learning process for me. Um, the last one I did on um, Tokyo International Forum was actually not intended to be about Tokyo International Forum. It was actually meant to be a review of a gimbal that I've been testing recently. And so that will come later on and I'll do that later. But um, yeah, it's kind of as soon as I go and do something, I end up changing the way that I do it. Um, but I've also been very, very aware that as soon as I start one process, then I end up doing something different, doing something else. Um, <laughs> and so uh, that was the guy that I talked to about his camera stuff. Obviously, he's gone home empty handed. He said that uh, I said to him, so. Um, have you taken any pictures? He's like, no. So, um, you're just waiting for something? Yes. What are you waiting for? A bird. Okay then, have a nice day, good luck. <laughs> have fun with that. <laughs> Obviously now he's buggering off home. <laughs> it's pretty much lunchtime anyway, so. Um, yeah, anyway, so <laughs> back to the vlog thing. So, you know, Initially I wanted it to be about photography and now it's morphed into like a Tokyo and Japan thing. I kind of wanted to be in between. 
is probably what I'm still thinking. I don't want it to be completely about photography because there's a lot of people who get turned off by photography only. Photography could be very boring. Um, but then there's also the part that there's a lot of people who like the Japan stuff but not necessarily about photography um, and so vice versa. So it's, ju it's just not... Ooh, there's a wasp. Okay. Um, so, you know, it's generally not for everybody. So to try and find a balance, you know, the last one that I uploaded, probably I'm going to upload it today actually, um, when I get home later on is going to be about Smug Mug and Flickr and things like that. And that is purely about photography. It's me sitting down just talking about one thing. I'm not showing you anything about Tokyo. And for me, that's a little bit different. I've not done anything like that before. So I'm kind of curious, but there's two thought processes about what I'm going to start doing. I think I'm either going to talk more about one, I'm going to talk more about me going around Tokyo taking photographs and that process um, so you kind of see the photography and the parts about Tokyo at the same time um, or it just becomes a vlog on Tokyo and we just talk about Tokyo only what I know what I don't want to do is going to be like isn't Tokyo so wacky uh, and you end up with a still like this and that's now going to be the still for this <laughs> <laughs> and it's gonna be like 10 things you shouldn't do in Tokyo that's not what I want to do like it's so cliched everybody comes to Tokyo and, and Japan and think this is Japan is so wacky people have normal lives here people <laughs> it's not always crazy and bonkers see this area is filled with people going enjoying the sunshine with their kids that's what Tokyo is to me not just like, <gasps> you didn't take your shoes off, oh my god, there's going to be people running after you. No, come on. It's not what Tokyo is like. It's what Tokyo is like if you're wearing tinted glasses. <laughs> so, for me, I was kind of, kind of doing one of those two things. Now, when I first started, I was thinking about doing photographic challenges like where people would give me a challenge. Hey Chris, go and have a camera, go and test it and do something with it and that was the original idea but I'm now no longer doing that at all um, the only thing I am doing is like people say hey can you go here and then I go there and I photograph it or do something with it um, so yeah I'm not quite sure where to go so I'm kind of asking you guys I want to kind of know what you want to see what entertains you what is the thing that entertains you the most that you feel that, that interests you a lot um, and then that's really really what I want to kind of achieve so let me know stick it in the comments um, and we'll maybe take it from there maybe I'll do another update in this but probably the next one I'm going to do is going to be talking about a gimbal so that's going to be completely photography related and me asking around in the park like I am now really no difference anyway time to go home time to go and grab some grub Subscribe if you like my channel. I don't like these gloves. They're kind of weird. I feel like Michael Jackson. <laughs> Wearing these gloves. But they do save my hands from getting absolutely hammered on the bike. So anyway, subscribe. Let me know what you think. I'm going to cycle home. And catch you later.